today's world and in today's investment world, I find that uh, one of the, the key uh, elements that distinguishes companies that are going to achieve long-term success versus those that are going to fail is a company's ability, uh, a company's ability to innovate and continue to do so. The biggest challenge that we have in educating entrepreneurs, is, especially in the emerging markets that we are, have been focused on thus far, is just in giving them the ability to feel empowered to problem solve. In many of these markets, there is no opportunity to fail. There is no chance of rebuilding yourself or your reputation as an individual if you don't have a success. So the vision for what I have for Venture Hive is in creating this core set of competencies whether they be in communications, leadership, team building, and at the core though, just good critical thinking and problem solving skills. And then we work with governments and municipalities all over the world to help them be able to build these ecosystems with deliveries at the university level. So not just teaching students in universities to find a job and have a degree so they can go into the workforce, but to make their own jobs and to find problems in their local communities and create solutions themselves. So they're making their own jobs and jobs for other people. We also help these governments set up incubators and accelerators, recruiting high growth, high tech startups to their regions so that there can be those role models and success stories coming out of the region, which then changes the way the private sector and the governments and investors look at a region. In Silicon Valley, we feel very blessed that we have the right combination of structural uh, bases to enable the flourishing of innovation. Uh, that includes a high emphasis on super high quality technical education. We have Stanford and Berkeley obviously nearby. Um, a, a stable economic setting. A lot of immigrants, because immigrants are, tend to be higher proportional uh, entrepreneurs than the, the native population. And um, a number of those kind of structural things. The structural change can lead to different cultures. And if we want to encourage entrepreneurs anywhere in the world who often face an uphill challenge, we need to encourage them by the right structure and they can thrive everywhere. How do you scale innovation? How do you make sure that innovation doesn't just reside in a few heads of, of the people that are you know, generating the idea, but rather can, that innovation can, can permeate throughout the entire organization? What we do internally and it's not our idea, it's one thing that we call programming the, the innovation culture. We encourage people to come up with ideas that are 10x bigger and not that 10x more efficient. So think big, uh, ideas, uh, uh, processes in place that allow us to iterate, fail, and recover from failure rapidly. So all those things, if you put it in place, it doesn't matter if you're small or big. If you put those processes in place, you can scale. You have to be in the right market also to be able to scale to that level. So the methodology that we use is called design thinking. And you can break it down into three basic parts. Technical feasibility, you know, can one of our clients make something that we're thinking about? Economic viability, like does it, like sure they can make it, but does it make business sense for them to do this year, three years from now, five years? And the last being desirability. Um, and that last one is actually where we sort of, where the roots of IDEO came from. You see plenty of products out there that are technically feasible and economically viable for their clients, and somehow people just don't want them. The thing that we focus on is that, that we focus first on desirability. We go and talk to people. And when I, go, when I say we go and talk to people, it, it's not sitting in focus groups and showing them pictures. Quite often, we will go right into their environment and spend upwards of an hour or two hours with, with a potential user. What that's allowed us to do when we practice design thinking is to take on greater and greater sizes of challenges. 